Balloons, bazookas, boob, boobies, bosoms, boulders, cans, hooters, knockers, melons, honkers, jugs, rack, tatas, tits, torpedoes, guns, bust, doorknobs, coconuts, and our favorite one, the girls. Welcome to the All About Breastfeeding Show, where your host, Lori, highlights mothers just like yourself and goes beyond the surface questions and digs deep so they share not only their joys and happiness in their daily breastfeeding life, but also their pain and struggles and how they worked through them. Episode number 93, Sally. Welcome to All About Breastfeeding, the place where the girls hang out. I am your host, Lori Jill Eisenstadt, IBCLC. I like being able to share stories of the families that I work with. I also want to be sure that I respect everyone's privacy. I have said this in previous shows. However, we're doing so fabulous here at All About Breastfeeding and gaining many new listeners every single week. For the newest listeners, I just want you to know that while I share stories so that we may all learn from them, I also want you to know that I respect everyone's privacy. When I share a story, I change and rearrange and leave out as much information as I possibly can while still keeping the foundation of the story real. I change so much that no one will ever guess who it is. Even if you think it is you, it probably isn't. I might say that I saw this mom this week, and maybe it actually was a few months ago. Your boy is now a girl. Your significant other may be a male or a female. Maybe they attended the consult, or maybe not. And if it's not relevant to the story, I will change that up also. Again, the important parts of the story are real and is what happened. As many of you know, I've started a Facebook group, and it's called All About Breastfeeding Community. And this week, I posted the following. I had a consult with a mom today. I will call her Sally, which is not her real name. She may join this group. I don't know. So the details of her story will not be discussed. If she does join this group, I would love for her to feel the support from the rest of the members. She is in such a hard place with breastfeeding. It seems so many things have been going so difficult for her. And from the beginning, she's been frustrated beyond belief. Sally is about ready to give up. She feels like breastfeeding has been so much easier for everyone else. And really, she's pretty down about why she is struggling so much. We all know that it goes easy for some and struggles for others. However, when you're new at this, you tend to feel all alone. And you see all these other mothers breastfeeding in public, and it just seems like they just pop the baby on and go on their merry way, and it's just not a big deal. And you wonder why that can't be you. So I asked the group, what words of wisdom can you share with Sally? And I also said, you may never know if your words get seen by her, but I promise you, they will be seen by others who will benefit. And I thanked everyone for supporting each other. It's now a few days later, and I've left her a voicemail, and I've sent an email. But sad to say, I have not heard back from her yet. The key word is yet. I'm still hopeful that she will contact me in the next few days. Sometimes moms have a few days to think about it and to rest and they come back ready to work. So I never know what's going to happen between what she read on the internet, what she read in books, what she was told by physicians and friends. She had so much conflicting advice. She had tried so many different things And it's now weeks after her baby's birth, and she has gone through cracked and bleeding nipples. They healed. She was using a shield. She was using a breast shell. She's used gel pads. She got a breast infection. She was pumping, and then she was not pumping. Someone told her, stop pumping. Just put your baby to the breast. 
Well, that might be good advice for someone, but if at that point her supply was low and her baby was not having a good latch, then only putting her baby to the breast exclusively for days in a row with no pumping and no supplementing, that then caused all kinds of other problems. And by the time I saw Sally, you know, she really even said that she's just ready to throw in the towel. But a friend of hers told her about me and said that I was helpful. So she thought that she would give me a call. And she really, she, she expressed, I hope you really can help me because really all I've ever wanted to do is breastfeed my baby. But it just seems like I have so many problems and it's still hurting so much that as much as I want to do this breastfeeding thing, Sally said, she just wasn't sure if she could keep going. Overall, the consult went as well as could be expected. Things went well. We adjusted her latch. It did feel mostly better, although she still had some twinges of pain. She even said that she could see the light through the forest. She could kind of see past all the trouble she's had. But now she said, I'm just so exhausted. What if it doesn't work when you leave? What if my supply doesn't increase? What if I still have to keep supplementing with formula? And of course, I talked her through all that, but Part of her was saying she really wanted to do this, and part of her was saying she just didn't know if she could keep doing this. Her partner who was with her was very supportive, and he had seen her through lots of tears, lots of crying. He's seen her through a breast infection, and his take on it all was, I'll support her in whatever she wants to do. So when I left Sally's house, I really didn't know what her plan was, and that prompted me to just write that impromptu post to the All About Breastfeeding community group. And what was really cool about it is that I just asked people, what what words of wisdom can you share with Sally? What can you tell her that she won't feel so all alone? What I wanted to do was I wanted to read some of the responses because if you're not in the group, and, and I hope that you do join, you just go to All About Breastfeeding community and you just ask to join. If you're not in the group, you're going to miss out on some great stuff. So here is the first post that I got back from Heidi. And she said, you know, if a baby can't latch for whatever reason, every ounce is a gift. Breastfeeding does not have to be an all or nothing. Rule number one is feed the baby. But there are so many ways to nurse that are more than just milk. And there are so many ways to give your baby human milk, even if it isn't an all-in situation. You're working so hard. If you're seeing Lori, we know that you're doing everything that is within your power and you are a good mom. I just love everything that Heidi said to her. And I responded, great words of wisdom, Heidi. Just as there are many ways to mother our babies There are many ways to breastfeed your baby. And Christina piped in and she posted and said, I told my lactation consultant after my first baby that breastfeeding was the most unnatural thing I could ever imagine. But once my issues were corrected, it was so beautifully fulfilling for baby and me. And I said back to Christina, yikes, I said, I remember When I was new at my job, I ran to my mentor the first time a mom said this to me. I felt like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do with that? Luckily, I had a wonderful mentor who talked me down and reminded me what I knew and gave me some helpful tips on how to proceed. Just like what happened to you, when this mom got the help she needed, it was like night and day. And I'm so happy for you, Christina. Then Angela posted, she said, if you had posted this the day I had my consultation with you, Lori, then I would swear it was about me. I am literally tearing up for this mama because I have been in her shoes and I know how lonely, difficult, and frustrating that place is. All I can say for anyone who's in that place is that 
It does get better. I promise it really does. Even if it doesn't feel like it will. My daughter is three months old now. And every time we sit to breastfeed, it feels like a huge victory for us because there was a day that I actually quit breastfeeding for a whole three hours. I hope Sally does join this group. I hope she realizes that she's not alone in this journey. I hope she knows we are all rooting for her and her little one. And I hope she knows she can reach out to anyone, including me, and we're here to help her through this. And then Angela says, my husband is now asking me why I'm crying. And I just love so many of the things that Angela said, because she really was also on the verge of quitting. She just didn't think that she could ever be one of those mothers who was just easily breastfeeding her baby and forget about thinking about nursing in public, which Angela now proudly can do. I responded to Angela. Ay, 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 Angela. Are you trying to make me cry too? I certainly do not wish hard breastfeeding times on any mother. However, when you do go through a particularly difficult time and you literally are on the verge of looking away and never coming back, and then something shifts and you go one more hour, one more day, and then one more day, and the days eventually start getting better. And then one day you turn around and you're like, it's working. It's working. That is so sweet when that happens. Myself, I remember it was like that for me many years ago, and I could always put myself in that place of overwhelm and feeling a lot of pain with breastfeeding and watching my baby wake up crying to eat and me thinking, I just can't do one more feeding. Thank you so much, Angela, for posting that for us. The next post was from Kellen and she says, I am a mother of five. I have three children aged five, four, and two years old. And I have two-month-old twins. I have seen Lori for the past three newborn experiences, and I've had so many breastfeeding trials. I was so young, inexperienced, and without support with my first daughter that I didn't even know people like Lori existed. I had no idea what was wrong with me or with my baby or why we couldn't do this, and I just gave up, heartbroken. With my second, by the time I saw Lori and realized she had major lip and tongue tie, it was just too late. My supply was so little that my baby girl rejected me. My third was a perfect storm of issues. My son had tongue and lip tie, torticollis, facial asymmetry, and on top of that, I had a postpartum hemorrhage while severely anemic that made a full supply impossible. I was devastated with my third. And believe me, I worked with Kellen. She did everything she possibly could. After two failures, I so desperately wanted to experience a nursing relationship and was crushed when it didn't work out. When I found out I was pregnant with twins, I had very little hope that anything would be different. But It has been completely different. And I will just add here, Kellen, when you emailed me and said, hi, I'm pregnant with twins. I remember, and you know, and and you said, and I'm going to breastfeed. My first reaction was, of course, you're going to breastfeed. And then my second reaction was, oh my goodness, twins, you need to make a full supply. And then I reacted again saying, You're dedicated, you're motivated, you are going to do this. And now they are both excellent at nursing. Kellen also says that her supply has struggled again because she suffered a hemorrhage. But you know what? She's working every day to get up her supply. And in the meantime, she is a breastfeeding mama. She's using an SNS, which is a supplemented nurse's system, and bottles 
when she needs to. And Kellen said, it has been so enjoyable to bond and be with my babies in this way. I'm thankful for the little victories, and I try and remind myself of them during the rough times. Keep working, and as Lori always tells me, ultimately, you have to do what is right for you and your baby. And I responded to Kellen. Thank you so much for posting here and for wearing your heart on your sleeve. I just know that Sally and other moms just like her, they really need to hear from moms like you, and they will really be helped by you speaking out. Your belief in breastfeeding and your tenacity and motivation was certainly tested with your breastfeeding experiences. What I love about you being so honest, Kellen, and sharing your story is that other moms can know and see what you've learned. And just like what Heidi has said, breastfeeding takes on many forms. We can have our dreams, and while sometimes they don't play out in real life as expected, try hard not to give up as you never know what is waiting for you around the corner. You have a beautiful family, Kellen. I'm very proud of all your hard work, your family support, and everything that you have accomplished. And that goes for each lady that responded here. And my response to the whole group, I said, many thanks to all the moms who find something deep within them to make a conscious decision to work hard to make breastfeeding work for them, whatever that might look like. Just like there are no two pregnancies or babies or families that are alike, and we need to hold back judging what others do, the same is for each personal breastfeeding experience. It's different for each mom and baby. Thanks so much to Angela, Christina, Kellen, and Heidi for posting. And for all the Sallys out there, people care. Other moms know what it is like. And we all hope for the best for all of you. A few other things I just wanted to add to this show. On my very first show, I talked about why I wanted to do this podcast. And if you haven't listened to this show, just go way back to the beginning and you will listen to that show and hear it all in full. I'm just pulling out one small part that I thought that I just wanted to go over again, especially for people who are fairly new to the show. So one of the things I asked myself out loud and wanted to share with you, why did I want to create a podcast with the title of All About Breastfeeding, The Place Where the Girls Hang Out? As a lactation consultant, I have long since recognized the lack of information mothers have about breastfeeding not only about early breastfeeding difficulties, but also how this impacts their postpartum lifestyle. I want a dollar for every mother who has said to me, I had no idea this was going to be this hard. And I'm interjecting here because the several consults I had today, three mothers out of three, totally unsolicited, all said the same thing to me in different ways. They had no idea how hard breastfeeding was going to be. Mothers will say, I knew I was going to be emotional, but I had no idea of the depths of emotions. The learning curve for breastfeeding is huge for many of us. Once moms have their baby, many spend way too much time isolated from the rest of the world as they spend time recovering from a pregnancy and a birth getting their strength back, and learning how to be comfortable with breastfeeding. The one most major, biggest, all-time complaint that moms have is they have few to no other mothers in their life who are sharing their real breastfeeding stories, real life stories, information, support, and advocacy, all breastfeeding related. My why I want to build a community that mothers can learn from each other, gain strength from their stories, and spread goodwill about breastfeeding wherever they go. I want to live in a world where no one is asking a mother, are you still breastfeeding? 
I want to live in a world where I never, ever, ever again see or hear a story that a mom who was kicked out of anywhere for feeding her baby, where no mother is ever felt humiliated by how she was treated when breastfeeding. Without getting too political here, I really do look forward to the day where a mother who's breastfeeding her baby is the norm and where human milk is the norm that no one ever questions ever again. And why won't they question it? Because the reach of this podcast will go so far that so many more people will truly understand why mothers breastfeed their babies. They understand how the breast makes milk and why mothers just cannot wait until they get home to feed their baby or why they don't just give them a bottle so others can feel comfortable. The general population needs to really understand the benefits that breastfeeding gives to mothers and babies and the environment. While the focus of this podcast is on breastfeeding and human milk, my additional why for doing this is so that no mother is ever judged for how she feeds her baby or what she feeds her baby, and to recognize that each one of us is doing the best we can with what we have. That was my end of that part of my speech. And I just wanted to add that to today's post. I wanted to, again, thank all the moms who added their voice, who shared information and empathy and support to Sally. And also just wanted to add that, you know, this is why I did create this podcast. And we are taking it even a step further by having the All About breastfeeding community Facebook group by helping and supporting each other there also. The last thing that I did want to share is along with the post, I also put this quote in there because I felt it was very appropriate and I thought I would end this podcast with the quote. It goes like this. Some people are too tired to give you a smile. Give them one of yours as no one needs a smile so much as he who has no more to give. Thank you to the All About Breastfeeding community for coming through for Sally. And I will send you an update. I will talk about it and let you know if Sally communicates with me and what happens with her. Until the next show, bye-bye.